All right, here we go, guys. The, I want to say winter edition of Picking Boats by the Side of the Road, but it's not really winter. I believe it's November 20 today. It's a Sunday. It is blowing and cold out here in Eastern Long Island. Um, got the boat out of the water yesterday. Uh, when I went down to the boat yard, saw a couple of boats um, on the side of the road. I'm not sure yet what we're gonna do, whether we're gonna show those. They weren't really the style of boat that I think uh, my audience is interested in. But you never know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll just stop and take a peek and see what they are. I do know I saw a, a couple of the boat yards had a couple boats for sale, um, and I actually looked them up and got the prices in advance. I've never done that before. Um, and you tell me if you think these are going to be uh, deals, no deals, still way expensive. Curious what your thoughts are. But in the first instance, give you an idea of the wind. I decided let's head down to the beach and see what's going on. I don't know how it's gonna show up from this far away on the uh, on the GoPro, but I already see monster waves down there. But uh, we'll take the camera out for a second and give you guys an idea of what we're like today and then we'll we'll pick it up when we're when we're by the boats. Yeah, even opening the car door was a challenge, but yeah, nobody on the swings there swinging. And again, it's going to be hard to take an angle, but you'll hear the wind for sure. And it's just a seal of caps. Terrible day. Okay, let's go find them. All right, we're in Kutchog, and one of my go to spots. Chuck's Fiberglass has, for the last month, a small speedboat. I mean, really small. It might be a Donzi Sweet 16. I've driven by it and have not stopped. I'm not sure it has an engine. Um, maybe they had it in for fiberglass work, restoration. We shall see. It's up ahead. Those of you that have watched some of the other videos know that uh, if I ever won the lottery, I would have one of those to just put around and have fun in. Not for fishing, not for anything else, just to go fast in. Um, these are little pocket rockets, the equivalent of a Chevy Corvette, a Porsche 911, Mazda Miata, there it is. really small oh boy all right let's see what we got all right all right guys hopefully the wind noise is not crazy but here it is on an easy load trailer so it's got some vents up here is there an engine there is no engine and yeah maybe 16 feet this could be a Donzi Suite 16 let's see no plate on this. Oh boy. For sale, 500 bucks, boat and trailer, no paperwork. 631-734-7345. Man. If anybody knows what this is, gauges are all ripped out. It, it's just the shell of the boat. It's the uh, steering cable it looks like. Is there an outdrive? You know what? This is uh, an outboard boat, so there wouldn't be an outdrive. You can see that this looks like it's reinforced aluminum. Looks like it's in good shape. I don't know. <laughs> really cool. I mean, you stick a 90 or a 115 on this, and I'm sure it'll fly. Well, I'm a little disappointed. I, I thought there'd at least be a nameplate so I could identify it. So on the right side, there's typically uh, a little plate here that has the HIN 
Now, these were required starting, I think, in 1970-something, 72, 73, don't quote me. And it's possible this is older. There does look like there's a little bit of separation here between the, the cap and the, uh, and the hull. But definitely the, uh, definitely th this was reinforced. This is not original to the boat. I think this is too much work, but uh, I am curious if anybody would know what this is. I'm not sure anymore if it's a Donzi Speed 16, but uh, cool boat nonetheless, but would require a lot of work. All right. There's one more speedboat on the way to the more traditional fishing boats. We'll, we'll take a quick look at that. Um, a big yellow speedboat. Hopefully it's still out there. Checking in a couple minutes. There it is on the left. And where am I going to park? Dang it. There's no real good place to park. Let me come up here. Get run over. Let's take a look. All right, Sofa King Fast. Registered through 24. This should have an interesting story. Sofa King Fast. I love it. Wonder if it's a furniture guy. I guess 39, 40 feet. It's a big boat. The outdrive is intact, looks like it's up. Let's see if the for sale sign has any details. It's an 87 Scarab, 35K, 33 feet, twin 454s, one's great, 631-445-2652, text or call. Got a cover on it, so we're not gonna be able to see anything on the inside. So it's a Scarab, like Doc's boat, but this is clearly a a racing one i'd still love to know the uh the story behind that sofa king that's got to be a good story uh triple actual trailer that looks like it's in really good shape um no bottom paint obviously these go fast boats uh, they, this this is being an 87 i'm thinking you know th this is like one of those uh south florida drug mule boats that would bring coke in from you know, from the Bahamas or wherever. Clearly, you could have a lot of fun in this. It's a Miami Vice style boat, interesting paint job. Um, again, different than what we're used to, but pretty good price. Uh, older boat, 454s, gas engines. You're gonna burn a lot of fuel. It's like it's got uh, four blade props on it. Yeah. I wonder if it's in here. Big trim tabs on this too. Um, nice trailer. Again, 35K, 33 foot scarab. I was way off. It looks bigger than 33. Looks like it does have a cabin in the front. Uh, clearly, this, this is not a modern scarab that is, you know, a fishing speedboat. This, this would be a pleasure boat only. But I can see somebody having a lot of fun in this, albeit burning a lot of fuel uh, with, uh, oh, and just reduced, I missed that, just reduced to 30K. So forget that price, it's 30,000. All right, we got a couple fishing boats we're gonna look at next. Let's go back to my truck across the street. Luckily it's early in the morning and this road is not, is not too well traveled right now. We'll find the next one. All right, we're entering South Hole. You see the sign on the right. And uh, South Hole Marine, a local Honda dealer's here. And they have a couple of cool boats. I looked them up before the video because I've driven by them so many times. It's up ahead. Um, one is a catamaran, a world, a world cat. And the other is a uh, dory an old style and a privateer there's three here and i'll be honest i wasn't crazy about the prices but we'll see what you guys think pulling in right now there's the world cat there's the privateer 
and there's the dory. Let's see what uh, let's see what they look like. All right here's the Worldcat first. It's a 290 Center Council twin 225 Hondas on it. These are the VTEC engines. I've owned a bunch of these. These are super reliable. This is a dual council setup. Let's see if we can take a look inside. Rod holders all around. It's a big boat. I mean, as you walk forward, you see how it just comes way out of the water. So it hasn't been in the water in a while. The, the registration expired in 21, which leads me to believe it wasn't in the water this year. Um, we'll include links to these boats to Southwold Marine's webpage. I think the price on this one was 85,000. I don't remember. I think it was a mid 2000s, no trailer included. Back-to-back uh, -back seating here, typical, typical layout of a dual council. Why you would buy a boat like this is for the ride. Um, I, I think these dual councils are a little short on fishing room, but they make up for it. The catamaran version with the ride. Uh, okay, I think it's 85, but I'll confirm. I'll include the price. I don't think this outrage is for sale. All right, this privateer I think was 20 grand, but again, we'll confirm, we'll put the price up here. From what I recall in the description, it was completely restored. You can see very basic, simple layout. It has a, I believe a 2020 Honda on it. Uh, but again, we'll confirm all that. There's the fuel water separator on that side, right there. Again, this this is a three-piece hull, meaning there's a, there's a cap on top. There's the liner in the hull, um, and from again what I recall, the ad said it was rebuilt. I believe it's an '80s vintage. I'll include all the details over this. Um, but uh, 20 grand, nice prop. This prop looks like it's never seen the water. Uh, there's a transducer. Very, very simple layout. This would be a good bay boat. I wouldn't take this out in the ocean. It's a really minimal dead rise boat, but a ton of fishing room for what it is. Um, the, you know, you could bring three, four, five friends and fish really easy. Captain Howdy, I like the name. And what I mean by dead rise back here, you'll see it doesn't have an aggressive V bottom. It's relatively flat. The angle here, the deeper the angle, uh, the better it will typically ride. You can offset that with trim tabs, but this boat does not have any trim tabs. I want to say that the floor was raised too. Again, the ad will have everything in it, and I'll, uh, I'll include that. There's the world's smallest fire extinguisher over here. Jesus, is this even uh, up to code? Right there. Let's see if you can see it. Um, okay. And then the last boat is this little dory here. Uh, this one was, I believe, 8200, and you can see this, another bare bones, like a Tiller 20 Honda on it. Uh, one bench, a couple of rod holders, five rod holders there, external gas tank, battery. Uh, these are old style, northeast main boats. I grew up fishing one of these. I want to say this one is a 14. My uncle had a 16. This is a Yankee Dory from what I recall. My uncle's was a sturdy Dory, but they look exactly the same. This, this lap straight design. This one has a nice trailer. I want to say the engine and trailer were 2020, but again, we'll confirm all that when we look at the ad again. Um, 8200 if, if I recall correctly, is the price. I get why, because uh, an engine, a newer trailer, and the boat, you know, you add all those up, and you're probably right around there. But is somebody willing to pay that? I don't have an answer to that. You tell me, would you pay 8200 for this? Certainly, it'll get you out on the water. It'll be a lot more efficient than some of these other boats we're looking at. But, uh, you know, it's still a lot of money for a big canoe. Uh, and I'm not downplaying it because I had many great fishing trips on the 16 foot sturdy growing up. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of money. And you can see this one is also a relatively flat design in the back. It's not a lot of V here. Uh, very similar to this privateer, but you see the privateer, which again I think is 20k, just has a ton more fishing room. You can walk around on it, places to set. You can even throw a bean bag in the front or back here. There's plenty of deck space. 
And if I didn't say it, the, the Honda's a 115 on this. Oh, and it was serviced by my buddy Red, who's now moved to Florida and sold his business to Strong's. Um, all right. So three nice boats here, three interesting fishing boats. Uh, there's a there's a boat across the way there too. We'll we'll skip that one. I didn't notice that one. We'll uh, oh, this does look like it has some type of wash down there. Probably salt water. I don't think this one would have a freshwater tank. I believe this has a new fuel tank too, from what I recall. Again, I'll try to include all that in the in the. You might have already seen the answer to that. Um, I think we got a couple more boats to look at at uh, Port of Egypt. I, if they're still there, an Edgewater and an older, uh, not a Sea Ox, a Sea Hawk uh, work boat that was reasonably priced. And I thought the Edgewater was reasonably priced too, but I don't remember the exact prices on those, but we'll, we'll finish with those two boats. A couple of boat yards here, the boat yard I use, which is Albertsons, that's gonna pop up on our left first. And this is, we're on Route 25 now in uh, the North Fork, Eastern Long Island. And so on the left side as we're driving east, you have uh, buildings, houses, a couple boat yards. Here's Albertsons, like I said. And on the right is the Peconic Bay. And both these boat yards, they have their boat yards, their shops, their stores. On the left hand side, and on the right hand side, are the marinas themselves pointing out to Shelter Island and here are the two boats I referenced uh, at the end there pull in here there's the Edgewater and there is the Seahawk there's a small Grady White here too I think we got enough boats so let's just focus on those two I don't see a for sale sign on this one anyway you know, I do think this Grady is for sale, 209 Fisherman. What I will do is maybe just pop the price on this one, the details, just for poop and giggles. It's a 150, is that a four stroke? It looks like a four stroke. No fuel injection, it's an HPDI, no four stroke. I should know the difference. But here we go, let's look at the Edgewater first. I don't remember the price on this, but I'll flash it across right now, including the year. The year we can get from here, it's an 09. So I recall this being a 250. This is the old 3.3 liter Yamaha four stroke uh, V6. Um, this predates the, the newer 250s, which are the four two blocks, same as the 300. It's got a little fresh water outlet right here in case you come out on the on the ladder and you go swimming, you want to dry off. Four rod holders right there in the back of the seat. Four more on top. A little storage box here. You can put some cool bait in there. A couple of rod holders on each side. There's a fold-up seat in the back. That's nice. A little uh, a little tray there in the engine well for your pliers and doodads that you you use fishing, Garmin screen. Um, I don't believe this is a digital control. I believe these were mechanical, but I could be wrong. Battery switches right under the steering wheel. There's a little glove box on the other side, a basic, um, you know, flip up bolster seat here. This is a, a 22 footer, 228. There's life jacket storage under the T-top. The T-top is actually a hard top, little windshield too. Little seating area in the front. Um, and Edgewaters are quality boats, same lineage as Boston Whaler, Everglades, Solace, all part of the Doherty family. Um, remote spotlight up there. Not a bad little boat. I believe this was in the 50s, but like I said, we'll flash the price across. Uh, need, does need new bottom paint. Um, but yeah, the, the, out of the boats I've seen, if I were to pick one right now, it would be this one. Um, bolsters on the side here. You can rub your knees on there. Actually, bolsters all the way up. Lots of storage in the front, too. So, yeah, that's this one. Now, this one is interesting. From what I remember, this is an either early 80s or mid-80s uh, Seahawk 235. Uh, and you can just see 
massive amount of room on this boat. I mean, it it's it's just wide open. And yes, it is set up right now as a work boat. Uh, you see the potholers up there. But if, again, from what I recall, this boat was reasonably priced, uh, maybe under fifteen thousand. We'll flash it across. And as long as you surveyed it and you didn't mind that it's not the prettiest boat, it has some scratches, no doubt from pots being dragged on it. Um, it this is a newer Suzuki 144 stroke. Transom looks like it's in decent shape. What year is this boat? Where is the plate? The plate is not here. Maybe the maybe the uh, maybe the uh the transom was redone at some point um if you're willing to put a little work into it you can get a really cool fishing boat i mean i don't know how it's going to show up on video but there's a ton of room here and again unfortunately seahawks well, this one's a little deeper what would this one be you can see it's more of a v than those other boats but to give you just to contrast it this edgewater is going to have a more aggressive v hard to tell but, but i'm surprised that's actually a pretty aggressive v i thought all seahawks were really modified hulls this this looks like it's 19 or 20 degrees so it should ride well oversized scuppers here lets the water come out uh if it washes onto the deck a very simple console layout very old small uh, fish finder but those those are th easy things to replace the floor does look like it was redone again we'll have the the specs um, flashing across with all the details and again I I want to say this was just under 15,000 I might be wrong uh, I looked these all up before I went should have written the details down there you go uh, we'll get back in the car because it's freezing it's uh, 30 something degrees and windy and uh, I'll come back. And that's what I'm talking about too, with the uh, with the marina being on that side of the road. I'll come back with my thoughts. All right, we're on our way home. Um, and the, yeah, some some final thoughts here. Uh, I, I'm I'm wondering if we're in a bubble yet. I don't think so, based on these prices. These, I, I think these boats are still more expensive than what they were pre-pandemic. And with the economy the way it is and interest rates on the rise and the fact that these are all luxury goods and a lot of people buy boats because they're seduced by these ultra low interest rates and low monthly payments, will some of these boats be sitting for a while? Um, time will tell, I guess. Uh, we'll, I, I'm going to be down in Florida in about a month. and. I'm going to do everything I can. I know I'm supposed to meet Rick in the Keys um, to do a little fishing like we did last year. And when I when I made the drive down last year, I did see a lot of boats on the side of the road and I wasn't prepared to film. Um, I'm going to be prepared this year and I'm wondering what the, what the difference in prices is going to be down there versus here. I still like that, that sturdy or the... The, uh, the Yankee Dory, pardon me, 8,200. Yeah, I mean, I would think that's a $5,000 boat, even though I know it has a newer engine and a newer trailer. Um, and yeah, the, the Privateer 2, I think, pre-pandemic, even with the work done on it, that was a boat you could probably get for 10 to 12. And again, I think it was 20K. I don't know. I don't know if we've hit that bubble yet. I think once we do, you know, folks who are in the market will get a lot better deals than this, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.